So is driving up to the red line and hitting the red line bad for the engine? Does it mean the engine is about to explode? Under what conditions is it safe to explore the upper part of the RPM range and go towards the red line? And under what conditions is it actually dangerous to do so? Is that the best way of extracting the maximum power from your engine? And are the benefits to driving at the maximum RPM that your engine will allow? So this video, we're going to look at the RPM limits put into modern engines. Engines. We're going to explore rev limiters, what sort of damage you can actually do to your engine if you manage to exceed the red line on the RPM and just really discuss all of the ins and outs and just bust a few of those myths out there about the red line. The red line is an indicator to show how many RPMs is safe for that particular engine. It's been set by the manufacturer. They've been very conservative generally when they set the RPM level. So most engines can happily work beyond the RPM limit. The RPM limits are set by the manufacturers to accommodate for imbalances within the engine as it works. Some engines are capable of revving successfully to much higher levels for sustained periods of time. I think particularly of the Honda engines, just how well built and balanced they are. They were practically built for those high RPM regions. If you try and drive a diesel engine the same way you would a Honda VTEC, you're probably going to hit all sorts of problems. And notably, the red line is going to be much lower on those diesel engines just because of the increased amount of vibrations and the protections the manufacturer has to build into those engines. There are physical limits in terms of how much vibration the engine can safely handle. The manufacturers have built this into the RPM display on most modern cars. Now, some manufacturers tend to use the same style for many different models. So it really is just an indicator. So let's just discuss those higher RPM figures. Is it dangerous? What are the problems? How can you exceed the safe limits of your engine and actually cause a damage to your engine? And are there any benefits to exploring those upper parts of the RPM range in your engine? So one thing to bear in mind when you start thinking about exploring that upper part of the RPM range is the engine temperature. So as an engine warms up, the metal components actually change shape. So the fit is designed for a hot engine. So when an engine is cold, everything is slightly out of shape. There's a lot more vibration going on in there. And you can cause damage to an engine if you push it too hard in this warm up period before everything has got up to its operating temperature. You also need to bear in mind the engine oil is designed to lubricate properly when it's up to the operating temperature. So if the engine oil hasn't warmed up, you're not getting proper lubrication and that's going to cause excessive wear on other components within the engine. So just make sure that the engine is fully warm. So most people would judge this by the water temperature sensor that they have on the dashboard, but that's actually not that accurate when it comes to telling you what the temperature of the engine is. It's far better to have an oil temperature sensor fitted because that gives you a much more accurate reflection of what's going on in the engine. And the all important oil temperature is what you really need to know before you start pushing the engine hard. Certainly avoid anything above that lower third of the RPM range until the engine is fully up to its operating temperature. And then you can start exploring those higher RPM figures. Do you hit the maximum performance at the red line or the rev limiter? If you look carefully at a dyno printout, you'll see there is a torque curve and peak power is generally delivered across the middle third section of that RPM range. There are exceptions, different engines are slightly different. I would strongly recommend that you look at a dyno printout of your engine just to get a feel for where the power band is. And for maximum performance, you really want to keep the engine within that power band. Now, one thing to bear in mind is the shift point. As you change gear from third to fourth or you change up a gear, your RPMs will drop as you hit the next gear. So at that point, you still want to be in the power band. So it might be advantageous in some situations to just exceed the top part of the power band heading up toward the rev line just to accommodate for that swing back on the next gear change to just ensure that you're still sitting within the power band. So it is a bit of a myth that maximum power is at the red line or the top end of the RPM range. The power band is fairly unique to each engine and it is generally within that middle third or middle to upper part of the RPM range that you actually start to see the power. So does constant driving at the RPM red line cause damage to the engine? 
Well, if you drive anything faster and harder, you are putting more wear and tear into the engine. So is it a bad thing to fully explore the RPM range? Well, it's not you'll actually have problems if you don't fully explore the RPM range when you're driving because engines tend to clog up. The spark plugs, for example, in a gasoline or petrol powered car will start to soot up. You'll start to get carbon building up in the engine just because the engine is operating at lower RPM figures. It's often running rich under those conditions. So things are starting to clog up and you can have a lot of benefit just by increasing the temperature of the engine, increasing the flow of air and combustion gases going through the head into the engine and then out again through the exhaust. So there are certainly benefits. People talk about the Turin tune-up or the Italian tune-up, which is basically driving at high RPMs just to allow that cleaning process to happen. So please discuss in the comments with me your thoughts on the Turin tune-up or the Italian tune-up. Does it work? Does it work in all cars? I've heard very, very conflicting and passionate arguments on both sides. Um, personally, I feel there is a benefit to driving a car hard occasionally. So in your everyday driving, certainly enjoy a little bit of spirited driving. That's why you bought the car. Overtake a few cars if it's safe to do so. And just allow that engine to fully explore the RPM range. But I wouldn't recommend you do that all the time. You will be increasing the wear and tear. So there'll be a necessity to change the oil more frequently. And other service items may need replacing more often just because you're working everything that little bit harder within the engine. What other safeguards do we have in the modern engine just to protect it from this excessive vibration and damage? Well, there is a rev limiter. So in some engines that will just cut off the fuel supply to the engine when you hit the rev limiter. In other engines, it's a little more complex. It might even trim the ignition and use other methods to slow up the speed of the engine just to maintain it at that maximum level. But that is a, a safeguard that has been built in to protect the engine from user stupidity. And let's face it, we see a lot of user stupidity out on the roads today. Is it possible to exceed the rev limiter or to exceed the red line set on the dashboard of the car? Well, it is. If you've got a manual transmission car, if you were cruising along fairly high speeds at say fifth gear at 70 miles an hour and you dropped it into second gear, the RPMs would suddenly jump up way beyond what the rev limiter is. And that really is the way you damage your engine. You have exceeded the safe limits the manufacturer has built into that engine. So you're going to cause all sorts of problems. The transmission is going to take quite a hit from the dramatic stresses that are coming through the engine as the engine tries to pick up speed and match the transmission speed. So it's going to feel like you've hit a brick wall. And that brick wall is actually the expensive components within the transmission and within the engine. So you could be running up a massive bill for yourself. So what actually happens when you over rev an engine? Well, if you were to throw a punch, a lot of force would be exerted. Imagine you're throwing that punch so hard that your arm falls off. So potentially within the engine, the components that hold the connecting rods, which connect the crank to the actual piston crown, can become detached, effectively breaking that connection. And you can effectively throw a rod. So a rod will physically smash through part of the engine just due to the extreme forces that are now being exerted. And then at the top of the engine, you've got a whole host of other problems that can happen. So the valves that open and close, they're now opening and closing so fast that they're tending to bounce rather than properly seat themselves. So you'll have situations where the valves are open as the piston is coming up towards them. So if the valve and piston collides, that would be absolutely catastrophic for the valve and also the piston itself. Both will become extensively damaged, requiring a major rebuild of the engine if that happens. So there's lots of other stresses that can go on within the engine when it over revs, but it really is something you want to avoid. It's not something that's worth doing, worth playing with. So stick to the manufacturer's safe limits. The red line is an indicator to you as to how close you are to those safe limits. And also the rev limiter that's built into the modern engine will also go further to protect the engine 
protection against these sorts of catastrophic damage. So I hope this has just cleared up a few myths. The red line is not bad. It doesn't mean your engine is about to explode. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. Let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on the red line, where you tend to drive in your everyday driving. I'm very curious to know what engine you've got and where you tend to explore most in the RPM range. I think for most drivers, it's probably the middle to upper third of the RPM range, but I know there's exceptions outside of that out there. So I would love to hear from you in the comments and please stay tuned. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. This all really helps us to get out there and I've lined this video up for you if you're just interested in getting the maximum performance from your engine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.